Hello everyone, this is Reza Dorani, Microsoft Business Applications MVP. In this video, we will focus on two use cases related to the date differences in Power Apps. We will calculate the date difference between two given dates, excluding the weekends and holidays. That's use case number one. And in use case number two, we will add days to a particular date and time field. And at the same time, while we are adding those dates, we will exclude weekends and we will also exclude public holidays. So let's not waste time and let's get straight into it. Okay, so use case number one, calculating the date difference, excluding weekends and holidays, given a start date and an end date, basically given two date fields. Now, before we start plugging in the formulas and understanding how this works in Power Apps, there are certain functions in Power Apps that are very important to understand. The first function is called today, and it's a very simple function. It just says today, and it gives me today's date, and it also gives me the time portion, and the time will always be midnight. So it kind of excludes the time, just sets it to midnight, and just gives me today's date. I'm recording this as of the 28th of June, and that's why I see the 28th of June, 12 a.m. Now, if you actually need the time portion along with it, use now and now will return you the date as well as the time. The next one is called weekday. And what weekday gives you is given a particular date that you have provided, weekday returns the day of the week. One is Sunday, two is Monday, and so on and so forth. So it goes from one all the way through the number seven. Right now, if you look at this, the weekday formula relates to the start date field. And if I play this app, Start date is the 8th, right here. I have picked the 8th of September. The 8th of September, this is a Tuesday. That means it's the third day of the week, and that's why it gives me the number 3. If I was to change this, so let's come back to June. Let's pick today. Today is Sunday. So when I'm recording this, this is the first day of the week, so it gives me a 1. So weekday will return you the day of the week. The next function is called date diff so it gives you the difference between two dates and in this scenario if you look at my formula it says give me the date difference between the start date and the end date and give me this difference in the number of days now in this case i have two date fields start date and end date i'm starting from the 28th of june which is today and i will go let's say all the way to the 30th of june so the difference in the number of days between these two dates is two now, Microsoft had actually put out a very good blog post on this, and this is exactly what I'm replicating in this scenario. And this blog post was put out way back in October 2017. So it's been a long time that this blog post is available right here for all of us to leverage. I will be tweaking it a little bit based on my use case, but I would like to show you how we can go ahead and perform the specific calculations. This link will be available in the description of this video as well. So the first step is give me the difference in days between these two dates. And we've already done this right here. So I can just literally just go here, copy this formula, just go right here and plug this in. All right, so I've got the difference in dates between the start date and the end date. But what I need to do is I need to go ahead and calculate whether or not some of these dates are in weekends or not. And if they are, then I want you to exclude those dates, right? I want you to exclude weekends. Now the formula for this is a little bit complex, but it is very well explained in the blog post. So rather than me going ahead and reinventing the wheel, I will point you to the blog post. But what this formula is basically doing right here is it's calculating the difference in dates between my start date and the end date, then dividing it by seven, okay? And then rounding it down to zero. So it gives you the number of weeks, whole weeks between these two dates. And then it goes ahead and calculates and checks how many actual weekdays were there in this date span and then performs the different calculations. Now, based on this, if I, if I run this right now, you see it says the number of days between June 28th and 30th is still two and, the, and it is correct because there are two working days between the two dates. But let's say if I pick Friday, so I'm gonna change this and I will pick Friday. Now, Friday is the 26th, and my end date is June 30th, which is Tuesday. So in reality, there are one, two, three, four days. But when I pick Friday, still the number of 
days between these two dates is two because it is now excluding the weekends for me based on the formula that I have plugged in. Very well explained in this blog post. I will give you the link to this blog post and also post this formula in the description of this video. Now, how do I exclude holidays? Now, in my scenario, I have leveraged SharePoint as a data source, wherein let's say my company holidays are maintained in the simple SharePoint list. This could come from a calendar. This could come from an Excel file. This could come from a SQL table. Purely depends upon your use case. If I head back to my app, right here within my app, I have already connected to my SharePoint list of holidays. And when my app first loads, I am going ahead and collecting that in a collection. Okay, so I'm just collecting my holidays in a collection. And additionally, I am also checking to see if this is for the current year. So if I perform a function called year, and if I pass now to it, it'll give me the current year. And right now we are in 2020. So as you can see, the year says 2020. And all I'm doing right here is I'm querying my SharePoint list to get me all the holiday dates for the year 2020. Right, my holiday calendar could have 2019 dates, 2021 dates, upcoming dates. I just want for the current year, and that's exactly what I'm doing on the on start of the app using a collection. So I'm just storing the current holidays in a collection. And if you look at my holidays right now, this is all the three holidays that are in my backend database, which is SharePoint, because all of them are related to 2020. Now, once I do this, I have also showcased the same collection in a in a gallery right here. Now, if I want to exclude these holidays from the date difference, in that case, I just need to add one additional thing to this formula. And all I have to do is perform a subtraction. And then I am filtering my collection, which are my holidays. And I have the column called holiday date in there. All I'm trying to check here is the start date and the end date. Go and grab all the holidays that fall in that time span. So this will return to me all the holidays that fall in that time span. And then go ahead and count and see how many holidays and just remove them from my final count. Very, very simple. Now let's go ahead and play this and change this. July 1st as my start date from the 1st to the 6th, right? My start date is the 1st, my end date is the 6th. In this case, Notice the difference in days is being calculated as two. Let's understand how and why. So from the first to the sixth, we have one, two, three, four, five days. But why is it only giving me two? The reason is because Thursday is one, Friday is excluded because it falls in the holidays category. Saturday, Sunday are weekends, so the formula is gonna exclude that for me and then give me the sixth and that's the output that is two days. Now let's go to scenario number two, which is a little bit more complex and a very common use case. Calculate the due date based on the ticket priority. So I have data source and uh, users come in and create tickets in a help desk application and users need to define the priority of the ticket. My use case is if the user picks any of these priorities, low, medium or high, in that case, the due date of the ticket should be automatically calculated. Now, if the ticket priority is high, I would like the due date to be three days from today. If it's medium, then seven. If it's low, then 14. The due date that is going to be set has to exclude weekends and holidays. I'm trying to avoid a scenario wherein a user comes in and creates a ticket on a Friday and then that ticket is due in three days, two of which are weekends and they could also be a holiday potentially on Monday. So in that case, literally all the three days are uh, holidays or weekends. And in that scenario, that ticket due date is not valid. So very common use case. I'm leveraging a form control. The first thing is the ticket due date. I do not want the user to change this due date. I want this due date to be calculated based on what the user selects in ticket priority. So I will go ahead and unlock this data card because I want to make changes to this data card. And the first thing is there is a display mode property for this data card. I would like to change this to display mode dot view. That way is this is always in view mode and the user cannot pick a date. That's number one. Number two, because it's a date column by default, you see it puts this uh, input placeholder text. So if I search for input text placeholder, maybe I'm just gonna replace this entire thing with TBD. That means this is to be decided depending upon a ticket priority that the user will go ahead and select. 
In this scenario, there is a little bit of hard coding, but I will show you how you can decide how much you want to hard code that based on your use case. Now, typically in my use cases, especially when I'm setting these due dates, these due dates are in the one to 30 range, right? So for example, maximum uh, due date is going to be 30 days from today. Now it could also be 60 days. In that case, you'll have to hard code a little more and I'll show you how and where. When the user picks a priority, I would like to go ahead and based on the priority that the user selects, go ahead and add three days or seven days or 14 days to today's date because that's when the user is going ahead and creating this ticket. And that is very simple for me to do based on the previous formulas that we have seen. I will go ahead and select this drop down control and we will look at the on change property of this drop down control. So every time this drop down control changes, I need to go ahead and define how many days I need to add to my date. So in this case, I will go ahead and use a switch case. So if it is low, I would like to set this as 14 days. I would, so if this is low, I would like to set this as 14 days. If this is medium priority ticket, I would like to set this as seven days. And if it is a high priority ticket, I would like to set this as three days. And whenever the user changes this, I'm going to store this in a variable, right? So this is my variable that I am setting every time the user changes this. And this will give me the number of days that I need based on the priority that the user has picked. So I'm going to call this number of days, just creating a variable right here. And in order for us to look at the value of this variable, I will go ahead and add a new label. And uh, right here, this will be number of days. So let's check this out. The user picks high, this is three, user picks medium, that's seven, user picks low, that's 14. Great, so now I know that based on the change that the user makes right here, I have the number of days that I need to add to a date. In order for me to add the number of days to a date and then calculate what days are weekends, what days are holidays, I need that date range. I need all those dates in a collection. And in order for me to do that, the first thing I will go ahead and do is, so on the on start of the app, I will go ahead and plug this formula first, and I will explain to you what this formula does. So in this case, I have cleared a collection that doesn't even exist. I'm gonna create a collection now. I'm running a for all operation, which is a loop operation. And in this case, I have an array. Now this array is that hard coding that I was talking about. I have hard coded an array of 40, that means get me 40 days from today's date, 40 days. I'm calculating this on the fly. Then I am going ahead and for every item in this array, and I have 40 items, I am going ahead and creating a collection. And in this collection, I'm adding the index, which is get me the count rows of this collection plus one. So it keeps adding a unique index to each row. And at the same time, go ahead and add this value Okay, this value, which is whatever the value is that you're looking at right here, one to 40, add that to today's date. So there's another function called date add, wherein you can add days. So I'm just adding a day. Now, if I run this, okay, I'm gonna right click here and run this, I will get this collection. And this collection now has something known as row index, as you can see, and it will have row index one all the way through 40, and it has today's date all the way through 40 days from today. So I've got this date, span that I require because I'm going to use this later on to perform my calculations. So every time the user signs into the app or logs into the app, this date range is going to be calculated. Where do I have my holidays? I'm already loading it in a collection right here. So how do I exclude it? Here's another formula. This formula is called remove if. So I want to remove items from this collection, which is my same collection that I just created, where the date the, is it a weekend? Sunday has the number one, Saturday has the number seven. So go ahead and exclude both of these. And at the same time, also go ahead and check to see if this date falls in my holiday calendar. If it does, remove it. Now, if I once again go ahead and run this, in this case, if I look at the collection, I have the collection right here, but the collection has already excluded weekends and the collection has excluded the holidays. Now, rather than looking at it right here, what I will do is I will go ahead and insert another gallery right here. So I'm gonna add a gallery and this gallery, the data source is going to come from my collection. 
date range. So now these are 40 days from today's date, every day going ahead, right? I have the 29th, I have the 30th. Why is it calculating it? Because these are actual days, right? These are days, 29th, 30th, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and so on and so forth. So it has all the days and at the same time, it's excluding weekends. So if you note, when is the next weekend coming up? That's Saturday, Sunday, that is the 4th and the 5th. 4th and the 5th are missing. Also, the 3rd is missing. And the reason is because the 3rd is a holiday. So it's gone ahead and calculated for the next 40 days. Give me the actual days. Now I have that. I have my date span. It has removed the weekends. It has removed the holidays. Now, how do I get the due date based on the selection that the user has made? So if the user selects medium, I need seven days from today. If the user selects high, I need three days from today. So I have my use case defined. Now, how do I get that and place it right here in the due date? All I have to do now, since I already have that collection in this due date, if I go to the default value right now, it says this item dot my column name, I'm going to replace this with one very simple formula called first N. Okay of my collection, which is my date range, right? Go into that collection. Now, get me n number of items. How many items? That depends upon this number that I calculated earlier, the number of days, right? Three days, seven days, 14 days. So how many items you want? In this case, I'm going ahead and saying, get me so many items. Now in this case, it's three because my ticket priority was selected was high. So it'll give me the first three dates. But what do I need? I need that last date right? Because that's the final date. After three days, it's already done all the calculations for me. So here's another formula called last. Get me the last value. Now it's still erroring out because I have a record here of in a collection. There's a record. This just needs the date. So all I have to do is dot date and that should give me the date. Now, if I play this, notice when it's a high priority ticket, it is three days from today, which is the first. It's perfect. One, two, three. But if I pick a medium priority ticket, it's now specifying that it's the eighth. Why is it firstly a medium priority ticket is seven days from today. So we have one day, two, three, four. It's excluding this because it's a holiday. It's excluding the weekends, five, right? Six and seven. That's the eighth. So it's gone ahead and done that calculation for me. And here's my output. So now based on the selection that the user makes, I have my ticket due date being calculated and it is also taking into account whether or not there are weekends and holidays and it is excluding those dates. This formula as well, I will plug it into the description of this video. Do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching.